All right, honeymoon phase is over. Victory Monday. I let that. I let that go ahead, and we gonna let that go. Like I wanted to wait before I actually gave you the real, my real, my real concern with the Miami Dolphins. I know the title of the video is called "Are the Dolphins the Class of the AFC Right Now?" And when you sit down and you and you look at the AFC, obviously the Dolphins are sitting at two and zero. Oh. The Jets, they're sitting at one and one. They got their problems with the Aaron Rodgers situation, the torn Achilles. The, the fact that there's rumors about the possibility that he could make a return in January, that is freaking ridiculous. I believe it when I see it. But Buffalo gave us a little bit of a scare last week, considering the fact that they lost to the Jets on Monday Night Football, but they bounced back. Josh Allen showed some type of efficiency this past week versus the Las Vegas Raiders and able to do his thing. And who we just beat Sunday night with the New England Patriots. I, I kind of got like a clear picture. I kind of got like a clear picture of how things is going to go as far as like the AFC was regarding the New England Patriots and the, and the New York Jets. It's, it's quite clear to me what it's going to look like. Unless, unless Zach Wilson for the New York Jets somehow, somehow just like has some, some incredible NFL quarterback training. For the next week, I don't see the Jets end up being a threat to us in the in the AFC East right now. And then, of course, like I said, the Aaron Rodgers, the possibility of him returning, I don't see that happen. I believe it when I see it. Now, New England, New England could be a little bit tricky because I felt like as the Dol- for the Dolphins, they kind of like took their foot off the gas towards the end of the game, had a bonehead, had a bonehead uh, muff snap. Um, it just I, I still don't I still don't know what we got out of New England yet. I feel like New England is just gonna linger around throughout the rest of the season and then they're gonna slip in somehow and get get a wild card spot. That's how I feel about New England right now. But Buffalo, they they're still they're still a viable threat. And if they're able to keep to keep the keep it balanced as far as passing the ball and and, and running the football, I feel like they could be a a very, very formidable, a very, very formidable um uh, opponent moving forward like last, this past week james cook got 123 yards on 17 carries that's the biggest that's the biggest the buffalo bills problem they cannot they can uh they cannot find balance and they put so much on josh allen to throw the football where he turns the ball over too much so if I'm 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 see I'm I'm seriously concerned about the Buffalo Bills if they can continue to play this kind of football uh moving forward. Now, the AFC North, you got the Baltimore Ravens. They're the other 2 and 0 team. Baltimore this past week, they looked fairly decent. Lamar Jackson was doing his thing uh in the new offense. I I could see them, but as far as everybody else it's nothing but question marks here. Pittsburgh question mark. Cleveland, Deshaun Watson not looking like that Houston Texans Deshaun Watson. We got the uh, Joe Burrow injury. That's concerning. So I don't, other than Baltimore, those are the only three teams that I can see that are actually like, Baltimore is the only team that I can see that's competing with the Dolphins at this at this particular point. And I moved to the South. Again, uh, Jacksonville. If I don't like with Jacksonville, it's it's tricky with Jacksonville because just watch, sitting down watching this past game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. I know the Kansas City Chiefs are the staple of well the team to beat in the NFL, considering how they just came off a of winning a Super Bowl. But Jacksonville, they had some opportunities to come in to come in there and actually win that game, and they they squandered it by bad play calling in the red zone and not take advantage of opportunities as far as the Kansas City Chiefs turnovers. Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson all, already hurt. At the two weeks into the season, I ain't see the Indianapolis Colts as a threat anyway before the season even started. But it's a strong possibility they could they could be a threat. I'm not going to rule it out. Tennessee, another team where they just don't have enough weapons at the wide receiver position where I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not concerned. Like, they just play – like I'm, I'm just not concerned with them. I felt like they should have lost against the Chargers if the Chargers knew how to do have better clock management in the fourth quarter. Uh, Texans, we're not. No, we don't even need to get into the Texans. But the AFC West, uh, the Vegas Raiders, they're sitting at one on one. The Chiefs are sitting at one on one. The Denver Broncos, zero two. Los Angeles Chargers sitting at zero two. Uh, the Vegas Raiders, they can hang. 
but I need to see a little bit more. Kansas City, like I said, they're always going to be a threat just because of the Super Bowl champions. At some point, I feel like they're going to get it together, but I'm concerned about their offense as far as how they're going to distribute the ball because Kadarius Tony, outside of Travis Kelsey, Kadarius Tony's their only guy. And we're going to continue to monitor the, the, the Travis Kelsey injury. And then Denver, we got them coming up. Hey, you keep on screwing up Russell Wilson. I can see the possibility of the Denver Broncos benching Russell Wilson sometime in the near future. And uh, like I just spoke about the Los Angeles Chargers, Brandon Staley, at some point, I could see him losing his job because, again, clock management in the fourth quarter uh, versus the Tennessee Titans. Uh, your staple, your defensive court, your defensive head coach. It's funny because last week we had the conversation like why I was trying to figure out what was the reason why uh, the Chargers fans didn't really like Brandon Staley like that. And I didn't really get an answer, but I looked and I watched the game and I'm like, yep, I can see why. Cause like the, like you're, you're Brandon Staley, you're a defensive court, you're defensive minded head coach. How you schemed against the Dolphins with Tariq had over 200 yards receiving and Tua had over 400 yards passing is ridiculous. And I'm just sitting down. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the player personnel that you have on the defense. Like you have some, you have some pretty good guys like Joey Bolson, Camille, Khalil Mack. You can't get it going with those guys to be able to, con- to get consistent pressure out of those guys. And then you have Derwin James in the secondary with JC Jackson. Yes. I know JC Jackson has kind of been not living up to expectation of the contract, but there's some guys there on defense where you, you should be able to at least be top 15 in defense. You've given up, what, 63 points already this season? That's, what, almost more than 30 points a game. So, at, like, what, 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 are you, like, what are you bringing to the table as far as Brandon Staley is concerned? But going back to the Dolphins, us coming off that Sunday night win, my biggest concern is the rush defense still. And obviously last, last week against the Chargers, we gave up over 200 yards rushing. Joshua Kelly, Austin Eckler, both. I believe they had averaged over over six six yards a clip. That's concerning us coming out against the New England Patriots. They had some they had some injuries along the offensive line. They were unable to establish the run game. Yes, it looked good on Sunday. I will take a win. I will definitely take the win, but I will continue to monitor the Miami Dolphins rush defense because every, every time I sit down and I talk about the Dolphins and their and 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 we talk about Christian Wilkins, that's been a consistent topic over the past several weeks. And team success is when they run the football and they're able to dictate how the game goes because they're able to run the football. That's a concern. But on the offensive end, look, I'm not concerned. As long as Tua can stay healthy, I'm not concerned. You keep doing what you're doing. And yes, I have not been the biggest fan of Tua, but look, keep doing what you're doing. And hey, it, what, if it's working, it's working. But the defense is still my concern where it's just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied with the New England Patriots backup offensive lineman because Andrew Van Ginkle was looking good in there. Christian Wick was looking good in there. Um, Seitler was looking good. Raekwon Davis was looking good. Like, I need to, I need to see another week. I really need to see another week before I'll be like, you know what? We're the real freaking deal because we're going to need the defense for us to be able to win games. 